AI Mentors is brought to you by Aulis International, covering your business's staffing, consulting and networking needs. Our podcast, AI Mentors, hosted by Mark Kelly, brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success and their advice. Focusing on fast tracking you to the top, AI Mentors cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. Welcome to the AI Mentors podcast. I'm your host, Mark Kelly, the Chief Customer Officer at Aldis International. In today's podcast, we welcome Ella Osterberger, Director of Analytics at Deliveroo. Ella has had a varied background working in the media industry within The Guardian before making the move to Deliveroo. Ella is originally from Austria and has made the move to live in London, the United Kingdom. Welcome to the show, Ella. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Ella, can you give us a little bit of a background to your career working in data science and how did you actually make the move into this area? Sure. So I think if data science would have existed when I was in school, that would have been exactly the career I was interested in. However, back then it didn't exist yet. So um, I started off my academic career by studying economics at the University of Vienna uh, and then very soon realized that I really loved statistics. Um, so much actually that I um, took classes multiple times, even though I passed first time round, I just completely loved statistics. And then afterwards I planned to spend three months in Amsterdam as an exchange student, um, but very quickly the city took a hold of me and I actually ended up uh, a few years there um, doing a master's in econometrics, which was exactly what kind of fitted my interest. Back then it wasn't actually that clear what the opportunities uh, with that degree would be. I think it was mainly in like banking, maybe insurance or staying in academia, but none of these were quite right for me. But then uh, I moved to London, that was now, I guess about eight years ago and um, tried my luck here and actually found the whole world of data science that was just starting off then. Tell us a little bit about having that love statistics and being able to to be effective at problem solving and trying to define the right problem to help businesses. And, and how did you start to develop those skills? Was it kind of purely curiosity? Yeah, I think that was one of the things actually I didn't like so much maybe about my studies that it wasn't very like applicable to like, you know, actual business problems. It was very theoretical. And I definitely had the urge to actually impact um impact the decision making and I feel like it, even though I really enjoyed the theoretical part I really missed that and so I um, I think that was something that luckily came quite natural to me I really like wanted to be kind of at the core of a business and help the strategy and help solve the business critical problems and I think just having those statistics skills was really a really good tool for me to to make that happen. And you made the move into consultancy and then the move to, to the Guardian. How did you start to learn how to develop your confidence to work with different types of stakeholders, business stakeholders who might necessarily have a scientific background? And then also the importance of empathy to try to figure out their problems and coming back and showing them some solutions that could help them uh, generate different impact. Yeah, so I think that is just a learning process that you you know, you need to understand what the stakeholders um, prior knowledge is their interest also like how much detail do they actually want to know and what are their objectives right what are they actually trying to get out of the work that you are doing and kind of use that information to uh, communicate correctly with them I think is really important um, and that is something you just learn by doing, I guess, um, and just watching how others succeed at it and sometimes don't. In terms of empathy, I think that is really important. As I said, you need to always think about what, in what position the other person or your stakeholders are, but not just, I think, your stakeholders, but possibly even more important, the end users of a product. So let's say delivery, it's like our restaurants, riders and consumers, like what would they like? How would they like the experience to be? And then really keeping that in mind whenever you build any uh, analysis or you know algorithms or any, any type of solution. And any important mentors over your career? I guess I've had quite a few, but um, probably less so on the data science side. I feel like I've been very lucky because people have taken chances on me. Like they, I've been given opportunities when maybe I didn't always have 
all the I did not tick all the boxes. So, for example, when I came, uh, I moved from Amsterdam to London. I didn't really have a I didn't have a job back then to go to. I just knew I wanted to move to the UK. So I, you know, I reached out to people on LinkedIn, and I didn't have the money to actually travel to the UK for interviews either. So I was kind of hoping that someone would take a chance on me. And I was very lucky that actually someone uh, came to Amsterdam to interview me and then offered me a job and paid flights and hotel for me and everything. Uh, so I was incredibly lucky that someone actually trusted that, that I could, um, you know, give give the company enough value to invest in me in me initially, which was amazing. And then equally, I think when I worked, um, as you said, more or less a consulting role for a, a big media agency, um, I had a, a a kind of mentor or boss that really trusted me and and encouraged me to take risks. And um, she allowed me to build basically my own startup within the company. So I built a social media monitoring, real-time monitoring tool for our big clients such as Virgin Media and Waitrose. And, um, you know, just having someone believe in you is is incredible. So probably not that many mentors on the data science side directly, but more people that gave me opportunities. And you were kind of telling me off, off, off the air, you were saying that you, know, you work quite hard at building up your career, building up your knowledge. And sometimes you would think you need to work extra hard uh, to, to get to a certain point where maybe in reality you didn't. Do you think that shaped you into becoming the, the data scientist and leader that you are now? Yeah, definitely. I've, I guess I've always suffered from imposter syndrome from like when I was in school to, to now. But uh, I think that was always one of the main driving forces that I had. That was kind of the little self-doubt of like trying to be better at all times. And with every decision I make, I, I, you know, I reflect on it afterwards and think, could I have done anything better? So I think that kind of constant feeling of maybe uh, not being quite sure that you are always delivering your very best, I think has really actually helped me a lot in my career. Um, but, you know, I think it's also getting better with time and with my experiences. And one thing, for example, that I have learned um, that helps me deal with it is when um, when I feel like, oh, I'm not doing that well, that I force myself to check in with other people, so to get feedback from others about um, their perception of how I've delivered the project, let's say, or um, looking back at like written feedback that I've received. So I think that is that is really useful to kind of have an outsider's perspective sometimes. Tell me a little bit about defining the right problem and the journey that you go on working with different stakeholders to do this. Yeah, so actually um, at Deliveroo, problems usually come find us very quickly. It's more that we are really overwhelmed with a lot of requests coming in and then having to prioritize quite hard. But I guess what we then do is we look at all the business problems that uh, come up and we do some impact estimation. So we size the opportunity that um, that lies there. So let's say if we worked on project A, we could um, increase order volume by X. And if we work on project B, we could increase it by Y. So we choose one over the other. So I think these are the kind of things we do to, to understand what needs doing. And then, of course, the, the interesting thing is translating the business problem into a technical problem and doing it in the right way. Because for us, um, incrementality and simplicity is really, really important. So we always try to deliver things very quickly and uh, with the right rigor like we are very scientific but we're trying to use the appropriate level of um, technical complexity yeah, that is needed and deliver something fast and show that we can have impact here and then maybe develop it further um, so i think that that really helps rather than trying to build a complete solution for several months and then finding that actually in the end it doesn't translate how you had imagined. And tell me about building relationships and buying with stakeholders. How do you kind of go about doing that? Yes, yeah, so I think the stakeholder relationships are all about trust. So I think they need to trust you to do your job well as a data scientist because, you know, we, we provide them with numbers and answers and they need to trust us that we do it well. And um, I think one thing that um, 
is important in that is that we communicate very clearly. Um, so very simple, clear communication, inform them really frequently about what the team's plans are, what, um, what we are going to work on in the next few months, report back on any progress that we're making or anything maybe that isn't going well and be very transparent about that. And then always linking it back to how it's relevant to them and their team. Uh, and I think that kind of com communication starts to build trust. So you're taking them on a journey. You're starting small. You're doing a step by step. And then people feel like they're going on that journey and along the way. So it's, it's very, very thoughtful. And you were mentioning there before about the importance of getting different people's perspectives, see mm. their feedback, checking in with them, building, building trust. And, and trust is a lot of time it's just saying, doing what you're saying you're going to do. You know, if, if our call's at 11 a.m., you turn up at 11 a.m. rather than three minutes past 11, or you say you're going to follow up with an email with a report, you do. So there's all yeah. these different small things that trust can make such a big difference in, in, in what, what we have. Tell us a little bit about time, about your, 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 your goal from being a data scientist, become more of a lead and then growing a team and some of the, the, I suppose, the skills, but also aptitudes you look for in data scientists to necessarily join your team. Yeah, so my personal journey into kind of management happened at The Guardian when I, uh, I was a senior data scientist there. And then um, an opportunity arose to, to to take on a team that consisted of data scientists and researchers. And um, it's not something I had planned to do, but, you know, as the opportunity arose, I just grabbed it and actually really enjoyed it. And I realized that I really care about developing people and I really care about these kind of relationships, you know, as you said, the stakeholder relationships and managing those well. Um, I care about doing the right thing for the business and having impact. And it feels like at a, a management role that actually um, allows me to do more of that than as an individual contributor. And so uh, I think there's your second question was around um, what, what am I looking for when I'm hiring um, uh, data scientists at Deliveroo? So I guess there are, of course, you know, you want technical skills. That's always something we're looking for. Um, but I think equally important is that they have really good communication skills, that they um, are really good team players. I think one thing we really care about is the, the team culture. So even though we've grown really quickly from maybe five to 10 data scientists two and a half years ago to now 100, we have maintained that culture where everyone feels really welcome. It's very inclusive. Um, and I think that is down to hiring people that are really good at collaborating with others and have very low egos and are happy to help and, um, you know, help answer questions. Also are happy to ask questions. So I think we are very good at kind of receiving and giving feedback without it being uh, received as being overly critical. <laughs> Yeah, so so because people with feedback, you always have to be very careful. But if you're giving it in a, in a very trusting way, and you want the person to develop and for everyone else to grow, it can be mm -hmm. taken on very well. Taken on very well. When you when when we were speaking off air, you were talking about kind of empathy and for for the customer, the 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 experience. Um, you have the restaurants, and then you've got the drivers, and then you've obviously the consumer who purchases the goods. Uh, tell us about some of the ways that you've tried to improve the customer service and maybe applying machine learning or, or data science to that journey? Yeah, sure. So at Deliveroo, we, as I mentioned earlier, we don't have just one end user. We actually have a three-sided marketplace. So we have to think about what do restaurants need when they work with us? What do riders want? And how can we make the experience best for the consumer. So we always have to think about all these three angles to, to a problem. And we also have um, apps that we use, three different apps for all of those groups. And so we do a lot to make sure that they are always developing and, and as good as they can be. So for the consumer, for example, we think about how do we rank restaurants that is most relevant to them because we want them to find 
food that they want quickly. And we want to give them all the information that they need to understand when their food is going to arrive, where their ride is, um, how they can get in touch with us if something doesn't uh, you know, doesn't uh, work out as planned. And then on the rider side, we, of course, we want to make sure that the orders arrive quickly and that the riders enjoy working with us. So we also constantly optimize the network. So we want to make sure that the rider has all the information they need. So where's the restaurant? Uh, what will I be paid? Where's the consumer? Um, what do I do if there's any problems at the consumer or the restaurant? Uh, who can help me then? So all of that we constantly need to think about. And then on the restaurant side, of course, we also want to provide them with information, but also re receive information for, from them. So let's say um, a restaurant is suddenly really busy, then we want to make sure that they can inform us of that and then we can send less orders to them. So it's it's always kind of checking the temperature gauge to see, you know, how, checking in with everyone, see how they're getting on, see proactively looking in, a, in in the future to see what type of demand we may that may affect our supply, and then looking at it as kind of a, a tree a tree like a, a chair and making sure that everybody is as important as each other because. Before, when we were speaking off air, I presumed it was restaurant consumer, and I didn't necessarily think too much about the delivery driver and, and their journey and how important how important they are to everything, particularly in the environment that we are uh, living in day day to day. Tell me a little bit about AI and machine learning and some of the uh, future advances that we may see that how it's going to help to create an incredible customer experience for a variety of different industries. And um, because we all think of Netflix as that, you know, incredible experience recommendation engine and all the different, it just works all, all the time. And everyone seems to want to have that type of service for every different thing that they're doing in their life. Now, can you see any advances uh, taking place in the near future that can that can change a lot of how we live day to day? As I said, we constantly look at the data and trying to understand where do we have problems, but also we work really closely with our research team. So we interviewing a lot of riders. Um, I think I mentioned to you as well that we, we kind of eat our own dog food. We always, we go out riding to, and doing our own deliveries. We spend time working in restaurants to see how they cope with the orders. Uh, and we, you know, we visit, actually, we invite ourselves to families when they order takeaway and see how their process goes. So we do a lot of that. And one of the things that we have found in by doing these kind of um, stakeholder interviews was that the riders can be quite frustrated by waiting at the restaurant for a long time. Uh, equally, the restaurants sometimes find it frustrating when they... Um, the rider isn't there yet and they have to, you know, keep the food warm for long. Or even if the riders come too early and they're just kind of uh, hanging out at the restaurant and, you know, sometimes you have many orders and then you have lots of riders waiting. So um, at the moment, one of the, the projects that my team is working on is making sure that we reduce the wait time that the riders have at the restaurant which is profitable for everyone. So it's better for the restaurants because they don't have riders um, just waiting there. It's better for the riders because they can deliver more orders in any given hour. And it's better for the consumer because that means they get their food more quickly. Can you see any future uh, trends happening by applied data science to, to increase, customer, uh, increase the customer experience for a variety of different areas? I think one thing that probably is always um, interesting is to personalize things a bit more to make sure that we actually have, you know, our friction whenever we use any devices or any uh, services is much reduced. And I think um, there's still a lot we can improve on that for many, many services. Um, so I think personalization is definitely one of them. But the other thing, I would like to see is a bit more transparency of when these recommendations are given and how they're made. Um, but then maybe that's just me because I do really like to understand why I've been given certain recommendations and maybe not others. Um, but I think a bit more transparency about how data is being used, how data is being played back to us, that information uh, generated from the data that we leave behind, how that is being used and being explained well. 
Yeah, I believe if people know how their data is being used, I think people will be very comfortable with that. But when there's uh, five pages worth of terms and conditions that you have to read before you can actually accept this, or you know, no, not many people are actually going to read those terms and conditions. They usually accept or or they or they won't. But being very transparent with that and going uh, the extra mile and sharing how the data was obtained is is really helpful for everybody. In, indeed, you've been listening to the AI Mentors podcast, and our guest today has been Ella. Osterberger, Director of Data Science at Deliveroo. Thank you very much for your time today, Ella. Thank you. Get the Aldous Advantage. Become a member of the Aldous community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to Aldous members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career and more. Become an Aldous member and get the Aldous advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldous.com. That's www.aldous.com. Aldous International, empowering through AI.